Hi, everyone. Welcome to Beacons of Balance. Ooh, you know what today is. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, all you ghouls and boys. <laughs> You're we in. This oh, is our beautiful episode. Oh, 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 yes. So, if it's your first time joining us, thank you for being here. You picked a good day to join us. <laughs> what are we going to talk about, Arlene? Yeah. Well, wait, Beacons of Balance is all about being in balance. We're in a world of duality, up, down, left, right. So this is a place to come to bring ourselves back into balance in this chaotic, crazy world, that, especially that we're in right now. Um, so that's what we're here about. We talk about different subjects to help each and every one of us. It's all about you. Remember that. That's what we're here for. At various times, we bring on guest speakers, talk about different topics to help all of us to live in peace, harmony, and love. That's what it's about. And today... Joanne, well, what are we going to talk about? Our fear, fear, fear. Now, by definition, of fear is false evidence appearing real. Yes, but there is a purpose to fear because it goes back to you know whenever way way back to a survival. It's a survival mechanism, right? So right. there is some type of a purpose to it. it's a mechanism to protect ourselves from potential danger and to be prepared to resolve it you know it's also believe it or not all of us because we're a bunch of you know we're energy but we're chemicals and it's biochemical emotional things and it's the middle of our brain and what's the word joanne right it's amygdala huh say it amygdala because i would hatch it up <laughs> a big and they say mary magdalene we would know how big it is that's what what releases all those chemicals and that you know but there's also, you know, fear helps us to focus on self. So um, it's a time to check in to see what really is uh, going on and to really be in the present moment. Right? right. Exactly. Arlene, do you remember that one year that you and I were running away from the dinosaurs, the T-Rexes? <laughs> so let's get that out of here, Joanne. Yeah, that's why my back is hurting me now. <laughs> right. You know, when you're in that fight or flight mode, fear serves you very well to get out of the way of the T-Rex. Exactly. But do you want to stay in that fear all the time? Not at all. It doesn't serve your giftedness, does it? No, not at all. Because we all know now that it releases certain chemicals, and those chemicals all can get stored in every cell of you and paralyze you to the point where you are fearful of everything and when you're in a happy, harmonious, balanced life, you also emit certain chemicals as well. So we can do a whole show on just chemicals early. Well, the big one that it releases is cortisol, you know, other than this being released, and then it, it releases cortisol. And where does it, and then it goes into our certain organs, and there's a couple of big ones, right, Joanne? And too much cortisol, guess where that ends up in your body? Then the belly. So if you're stressed out and you got a big belly, yeah, well, there's yeah, so that makes it. We could do a whole show on just cortisol. <laughs> so many shows. That's my mind. See, my mind goes like a hundred miles an hour. Your mind's uh, going all over the place. Yeah, I know. You could spin out of control with all of with being. You know, I mean, if you're if you're focus, whatever you focus on, you know that the same. Exactly. What you focus on grows. What you eat breathes. You know. Right. So, I mean, it's, it, just think about a plant. If you keep, if you water and nurture, it's, you know, it'll, it'll potentially grow. But if you take away total nutrients and water, it shrivels up and dies. Right. It keep feeding something, you know, it's, um, it just keeps growing. And there's, you know, different, um, the different symptoms from it are anxiety, apprehension, nervousness. Oh, yeah. Dread. They could wreak um, havoc. Panic. You know, panic is a big one. And rather than being a fear, I mean, fear. fear is moving out of something, out of your comfort zone. Yeah. And if you look at it, it's bringing up new challenges. But guess what? New challenges equal new skills, which is, guess what? A plus because it equals growth. So there's different ways. And here's where we go into the balance part of this. It's different ways of how you view it. You just don't want to stay stuck in it. For me, I'll give you an example. Um, all right. So I had my business that I love, my store. 
um, I, at the time I went through a bad divorce, another bad divorce. And <laughs> so I was, and then things were folding in on the business and I, I had to close. So I closed. I actually was forced, I had, I was forced to, in, into a bankruptcy, which was horrible. So here I left that and I stayed in a field position on my couch for six months because I had no, I had $1,300 to my name. That was it, folks. $1,300. Yeah. I mean, today you can't, I don't know where you live, but you can't get a rent for that. So my friends were all, they were afraid. And they kept saying to me, oh my God, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So what I did, because of course, yeah, I felt it. Maybe I was a little numb. But what I do is I, I walk up to it right in front of it, right in front of the fear. And I go, okay, now what? So I thought, okay, well, if I can't pay my mortgage, are they going to kick me out like next week? And I thought, no, it's going to take like a few months. So I right. said, right. I said, by then, hopefully, you know, I'll get a job. I know I could, you know, I'll do something. And guess what? It, it happened that way. On the 15th right. hour, I got a job. Then I ended up with roommates and I kept that house for 17 years on my own. And right. I don't know how it happened, but if I had given into that, if I got paralyzed and started shaking and went, oh my God, oh my God. And I couldn't move. I could, if I couldn't move, that means I needed the action to take to go out and find a job. If I exactly. was paralyzed and stayed on that couch, that would never happen. And then everything would have crumbled it. So that's right. what we have our choices on this. Yeah. And not only that, our, we found that whatever you fear, you bring to you to learn that lesson. Yeah. If you remember anything from this episode, remember that whatever you fear, you bring to you to learn that lesson. And you don't want to keep doing this over and over and over. So what you're actually doing is you're robbing the body's energy banks. You know, if you live in an anxiety and survival mode, then there's no energy for repairing your body. Sure. So something for you to think about. It's Just like think. we have this the well of water, which represents our energy, like Joanne said, our energy bank. If you yeah. Can, throwing that out, throwing it out, and you don't replenish it and be kind to yourself and pull in and reflect, you dry it up and you crumble. You're not, you're no use to yourself or anyone else around you. Right. You literally become someone else. You know, when this fear takes over you, people can't talk to you. You're short with them. You jump on everybody. It's like, it's not fun to be around people. Is it? Or like well, that. So there is something, um, to it. I mean, we all, you know, experience it. It's not that we're going to get rid of any of the, it's not like we wash these things away and they just go away. We all come up with this. You know, if you've got a call right now, Julian, about one of your grandkids or something, what are you going to do? We all go into that place. Same thing with me, right. you know, you, you just like, you know, we do it a lot with our spouses, you know, my husband's going through health stuff. Of course I go into a crisis mode, but I, sure. you know, the whole thing is, you could do it and feel it, but don't stay stuck. Right. Then what happens, it turns into a phobia. Right. You know, a phobia. most of it is just remembering bad memories. We go back to, uh, well, wait, if, if I suffered this much because it happened in the past, then if I try this new thing again, I'm sure to fail because that happened in the past. That's just your mind playing tricks with you. And here's the cool thing I learned. Memory without the emotional charge is wisdom. That's cool. Memory without the emotional charge is wisdom. So you always want to be moving forward. I mean, this is why we're here. This is why Arlene and I do this. We're trying to get you out of that stuck mode, pull you up from the mud, because we believe in you that much. We love you that much. We see your magnificence. Yes. You know, this is also a lesson for us. You know, we, it's a reminder for us. It keeps reminding us because you do have to keep, you practice, practice, practice to keep reminding yourself. Of that mind is so powerful. Mind over matter. You're going to hear us talk about this laced throughout many episodes. Or how important your mindset is. So no. again, I mean, fear is fear, you know, I mean, we can't deny it, but the thing yeah. is not to get stuck and to play it over 
and over and you yeah. etched in that and you could go back to yeah. um well my husband's afraid <laughs> he's afraid of spiders i mean a lot of people have fear from different things but his goes back to um his childhood where their house had an underneath um there was a spout or something for the water and his father used to make him crawl underneath when as a kid oh, yeah. underneath to shut or turn that off and when he went underneath there it was all webs and there were spies so of course he's like so that's uh you know something that's in him yeah. right that's just think back when you were a child whoever's listening to this some of the crazy things that your parents were deathly afraid of because their parents passed it on to them and their parents like i know when i was a little kid Every time it was thunder or lightning, my dad would make us get in the basement like it was a tornado coming so, because he almost died, you know, on a boating trip in a little canoe fishing out in Lake Erie. So that fear was deep set, deep set within him. And so he didn't know any better. And then he was passing it on to the children. To this day, it's like when it's lightning or thunder, I'm like, or some people just, they'll go out and just bathe in it, you know, strike me. I <laughs> just or they want to sleep in it, you know? It's like, oh my God. We all have our things. I have a thing with rodents. I just, you know, and it goes back to childhood trauma. And, um, but, you know, I try to um, work with it and deal with it the best I can. I also have a thing with water. Even though I love water, and I know water is very healing, especially the ocean, the ions and everything. It's probably from past life stuff, but um, it hasn't. So I might have like a fear around it, but I don't have a phobia. Because, you know, we had a boat, I go out on cruises, you know, we have a pool. So, I mean, it's a difference. You know, if you have a phobia, that means you're totally paralyzed and you can't. I wouldn't be able to go near water at all. So there's yeah. a difference with that. And it's just, no, again, an awareness of it. Yeah, I think you and I were in Atlantis, Arlene. Oh, I definitely had that wall. Yeah, where that giant tidal wave came over. <laughs> that was my nightmare dream for the first 15 years of my life. This gigantic wave coming over me and pulling me out getting tangled in the seaweed and then I had to go for a past life regression and found out that was fear from Atlantis so I'm just telling you how your brain can reprogram man I'll tell you what um when you keep saying it can get worse guess what it will be words words are powerful and this goes back to, are, are very powerful this goes back to thought word and action most of us I think the entire planet here lives in thought and word we got we think about something we'll talk about it like, oh, you know, like I had talked about creating this for like a while, but I talked about yep. I wasn't doing, well, I did some of the action behind it, but I wasn't techie and I didn't know how to pull that all together. So right. it sat there until, until somebody came along and was a little push that I needed that pushed me. We all need that push to do the action part. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, it's not, nothing's going to happen if we don't put the action behind it. Right. But here's a good example of, when you stay stuck in that fear or anger and this works the same way with you're angry about something it goes way beyond fear but they're all connected you yeah. know one of my clients yeah i'm sorry to college student yeah go ahead i'm sorry one of my clients was a college student and he would deliver pizzas to get extra money and he would just be minding his own business you know driving around campus or the local town and no matter where he went he was always getting a ticket or it seemed like nothing. Or other people would be going 80 miles an hour past him and they would ignore those people. And he started fearing and then he started getting angry about all policemen. Well, I said, you know, if you keep this up, you're going to keep attracting. And sure enough, he got five more tickets. Wow. And he did not want to listen to what I had to say because he was so much in anger at this point. The fear led to anger. And we know what happens with that early, right? anger and i'll just it's eventually. interesting what you said because all of these things and we always say like our angels say keep us simple you know yeah. the fear anger hey if you, it's like an onion you peel it back and it right. all anger the hate and everything if you peel back that all the way the core like the artichoke heart the yeah. artichoke heart is fear now the opposite you know of um, that it's it's love love is right. the bomb love is everything for everything and, exactly um, yeah and it's sad because 
in this day and age, Arlene, when people are high anxiety, what's the first thing their doctors do? They give them a prescription for anxiety medication. Well, all you're doing is masking the situation. I always say that doctors are symptomologists. They treat the symptom. They never get to the root cause. Well, so if you're always right. taking drugs for anxiety, you're yeah. not getting to what the true base of the problem is. Well, I pray that we're moving away from that. Um, and the way this and we're not doctors. Let me just yeah. But the way the system is working, it's it's breaking down. So yeah. we're not telling you to get off your medication. I'm just uh, oh. yeah. Don't even go there because we are now, not doctors. Now, but knowledge is well. Just be aware, but don't drive yourself crazy with it. But I doubt things. Yeah, what Arlene and I do is strictly for entertainment purposes. We are not here to uh, prescribe any medications or tell you what to do. So we're just sharing some of our wisdom because between Arlene and myself, we have, what, 80 years of experience? I mean, <laughs> a lot that of years. Sounds so extreme, doesn't it, Arlene? A lot of years. But I always say, even with that, if we go back to medical to check things out, I always say get get at least three opinions. Exactly. Four, three or four, and then weigh out all your options and see, because it's amazing. You could go to top specialists and get four, and they get four different opinions. They're all different. And because so one of them, you know, yeah, someone may be trained holistically, and someone may be trained, you know, the old-fashioned way from med school, yep. and they're just taught to throw everything at the wall to see what sticks. Exactly. So, come guinea pigs, because you know, if if you had ten people with anxiety and they gave all those ten people the same drug, they're all going to interact differently because we're all chemically different. And then how about the ones they give the placebo to, and they say, this is going to do this and this for you, and guess what? And they get the reaction that helps them, and it's a exactly. placebo. So it shows you the, the, with, with our mind and our thoughts. The mind is are, so powerful. It is. Powerful. Yeah. So I always, I don't know, it was always just my personal thought, Arlene, that a lot of these fears go back to past life, because think of what we've been through. You and I probably went through the Salem witch hunt. We were probably oh, been. A, oh, I definitely no. I was shackled, shackled. I can't wear, um, I can't wear anything. God. Can't put anything. Well, I probably was beheaded too. <laughs> Actually, we're going. We're going to uh, Paris where the guillotine. There, there was Monsieur. M M I say I can't say the French. Mister Guillotine. There is a place. Oh. There was actually a person that created it. Right. So, um, well, I don't know if I want to go there. But anyways, um, yeah, I can't wear anything up here, and I can't wear anything tight. So I know I, I had to be shackled. Right. <laughs> I know when I was in France, I, I was actually at the place where someone was beheaded. And, you know, the, to see one of those guillotines. Oh, that's funny you're saying that. Cause we've it, been there, done it, got the t-shirt right early. Yeah. <laughs> that's weird. You know, this touches back to men. I mean, God, going back 40 years ago. Um, you know, I'm in Connecticut. There's New London. It's a sub base is there. And they had a sub that was when um, they were talking about. We went in. And it was a sub is small. I mean, you know, this is an old one. So it's small and you're claustrophobia. Oh, my God. And it was hot and musty. And they showed where, you know, the guys slept. And then, then we were like in a boiler room or something. They said, oh, yeah. And over here, they they uh, captured the Japanese. You know, and they had them um, uh, handcuffed, you know, to the, the pipes. I started, I had to get out of there. I almost passed out. Yeah. Yeah, probably brought up some past life, you know, when you well, were Well, that's before to... I understood any of this, you know, or investigated any of it. I was just like, I was very affected by it. I felt, I felt it. Um, the energy. But, you know, so we discussed fear and what it does to you and what it does to your body. Did you also know that the kidneys mm. are where fear is stored? Kidneys, bladder. So I've got a client that is beyond fearful every Day. he's afraid of everything and he's got the worst condition of cysts and tumors on his kidneys and it's like yeah it could affect the adrenal gland sits right on top of the kidneys right that is so, all, where does all everything that affects it exactly so we talked about what fear does to you where it affects your body what body parts it affects so yep. how do we alleviate fear Arlene how do we get through this for the people that you know, there's different techniques. There's one called EFT, the tapping. Yeah, um, that and you say things, yep. Supposedly that releases certain things in your brain, your thinking. Yeah. Uh, there's hypnosis. 
you know, I studied with Dolores Cannon, and it was very interesting to work with her. Uh, bless her heart, she's long deceased, but she would hypnotize a patient going back to another lifetime, another lifetime. It could have been from the 1500s when they were in the gallows waiting to be hung or tortured. And she would go back to that time and release that, that whole experience, and then bring them back to this day and age, and she would literally release the illness or disease that they carried from that time. Yeah. Or carry all that emotion all of those lifetimes. It was really amazing. Um, then there's theta healing. Now I'm trained in every aspect of theta healing if you want to get rid of old beliefs. So we come into this world with trillions, that's T, trillions of beliefs stored in the subconscious mind that you're not even aware of. You know, how many times people say, oh, I'm over my husband. We've been divorced for 10 years. But then all their actions and what comes out of their mouth shows me they're not over them at all. They're still carrying the anger and the fear of being left alone, abandoned. And so we have to go in and work on that. So it's um, it's pretty amazing technique. You know, we could do a whole show just on releasing old beliefs because we all have them. We all have them. It, it, and bringing up this point for ones that are out there, grandparents are listening, but their children or, or people that have young kids, just um, be aware of what you're saying and feeding, and, uh, feeding yeah. nutrition, feeding it from the words to your children because they are, Especially up over the week, they say the age of seven is the age of reason. It's when they become jaded. But before that, they are just these big sponges that right. just absorb. Even in vitro, in the pregnant mother's belly, they hear things. Right. Here's um, Lipton had a, a video that showed a baby when the parents were um, fighting. Um, first, they had soft music and gentle music playing it seemed like the baby was being rocked and the parents start screaming at each other and that baby actually in the womb jumped up oh yeah so they picked up on that anxiety high anxiety is that's one of the things i do with my clients it's, it's called a baby in the womb healing where we actually go into the womb and uh it's a whole process they you're floating in that amniotic fluid think about this if your mother was high anxiety or was smoking, you know, like a chimney or couldn't, was fearful of this pregnancy, that baby's picking up on all yeah. of that stuff. Yeah. So, and I'd have to go in there and just clear all that out. Yeah. And then you always replace it with, you know, good. But this is one thing I'll tell you what, Arlene, you brought up a good point about we have to be so mindful of how we talk to our children, our grandchildren. You know, how many people times I've heard people in a store, oh, you're just like your brother. You'll never amount to anything. Or you're such a brat. Or you know, they call them all these, really? And then they'll be hitting them on top of that, calling them names. So the most important thing I've ever learned from a child psychologist, and this always stuck with me, we've all had children or grandchildren that just, they could have a terror day. I mean, no matter what, they go into the terrible twos, they talk back to you, whatever. So what you say to them is, you know, you're not a bad person. It's your behavior that's bad. And they that stuck with me. That's a red one. You're not bad. It's your behavior, behavior that's bad. Because when you tell a child, you're a monster, you're, you're such a brat, I, you know, I, I can't stand you, I wish you were dead. I mean, I hear it all in grocery stores, department stores. No, it's not the child. When you start telling that to a child, you are instilling to him that he is worthless. Yeah. And then he figures, well, if I really am this monster, I might as well just be a monster the rest of my life. I'm going to just be nasty and mean to everybody. That is so, no, no it's remember true. that. That is so powerful. I can't even begin to tell you. You know, that curious forward he to as an adult and everything, because I had this happen with me where fam, close family members said, you hate me to me, to me, I hate them. And I said, not at all. That's not true. But oh. I said, do I hate the behavior and what, you know, the words that come out? Yes. That's destructive. Exactly. I don't hate you, the person. No. But see, your words 
are so powerful. You could literally cut a person in two with your words. Mm. I say, I've always said this to always, yeah. I always say this Bob. is stronger than nuclear weapons. It really is. Yeah. My mom had a saying, be careful of what comes out of your, off your tongue, because that tongue could come back and slice your own throat. Hey, they had an answer for everything, didn't they, But they had the visual that you actually saw that. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Oh, another, okay, so going back to things that were told to you, because we talked in the other episode about throwing salt over the shoulder and things yeah. that I remember my mother said to me, and I never like looked at myself in the mirror, like occasionally you'd go by, right? And she'd say, yeah, I keep looking in that mirror, you'll see the devil. It's like, <laughs> that must have been a thing passed on to her. Like, you know, vanity, maybe it was from van, you know, being vain, but it wasn't. It would right. come across that way. <laughs> yeah, my mom's whole thing was wait. Oh my God. Cause she wanted to be a movie star. You know, she had this gorgeous, she was beautiful. She had the high cheekbones and she collected all the famous movie stars autographs. She would stand in line to see Jean Harlow. And that was her thing. That was her big, her, her dream. So she was always conscious about weight. So if I'd gained five pounds, she'd always say, nobody's going to marry you. So you don't think I didn't carry that with me, that whole even to this day, it's like, I know oh I do. We have those things that are in there. But what's your pick? So be mindful of look your at, look at our Look at our society, though. They still do it with, you know, now everybody's Ozempic craze, you know? It's like, oh my God. And they're yeah, all, shrinking, out about they're all their... shrinking to be, you know, um, who was it when we were growing up? Twiggy. Twiggy. Yeah, they're all gr trying to be Twiggy. Remember Twiggy? How skinny oh. would we be? But even, you know, before that, I'm talking about the Raphaelite days, you know, he, it was cool to be fat oh, yeah, and white because if you were tan, that meant that you were a laborer, field. you were out in the fields laboring. And so they were the, the stubby plump, you know, with the cellulite and the whole, the whole package. We would pay the always <laughs> like, they're right there. <laughs> Those are my pictures. <laughs> Sign me up for the grapes, baby. Yeah, let him eat cake, you know? <laughs> oh, my Lord. Yeah, because if they could eat, you know, anything they wanted, that showed that they were very high status. They were rich. Us, yes. Yeah. And the whiter, the better. The whiter you, you know what? You know what's funny? You're Wait, saying yeah. that because, of course, you know, my parents were old, you know, they were old generation and depression and all that. And I think my mother had it in her head that a fat baby right big plump was healthy so it's stuff your mouth that my mouth god lady. told and me she used to stick the food well back then they called it pablum 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 which was i don't know like oatmeal i don't know what that it was and she said it would be coming out of the side of my mouth and she'd be shoving it in because she didn't want to have a skinny baby right or what did we always hear growing up oh god finish everything on your plate there are children starving in china yep like, okay, how does that affect me? I'm looking, somebody. God, I'm looking out my, I'm looking out my window. You know what's out there, Joanne? What? This is, and I'm not gonna be in here if we're talking about fear. Well, it's Halloween the weekend. Here, this hit me like over a year, maybe two years ago. She what's goes, out there? A ghost? Oh my lord! She goes all over my window. That are stink bugs. I don't know what people know what those are, but they were their whole elements. They were. And I go, what's a stink bug? I never. <laughs> this, see, this is how you. All my fault. As soon as she told me that, guess what appeared in my house? A stink bug. Bugs. I'm looking out, but I think it's outside the window, not in. And do you know what? Any of the insecticide companies will not guarantee stink bugs because their shell is so hard. Nothing you spray on them affects them. Okay, goodbye, stink bug. You fly away. Fly away. <laughs> don't come and never talk with them and say look you know i really love you but if you continue yeah. this, i'll have no other choice than to eradicate you oh god no just go away no. go bye-bye go bye-bye bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. <laughs> oh my god yeah i actually know people that talk to their insects and they make them go away by threatening to i don't want to do this i love you but if you Not, give me no choice so, yeah i've heard that too you no know, you know I don't know. It hasn't worked for me. I guess I'm... It hasn't worked for me. Um, <laughs> so what else can we say about fear? You just don't like well, it. 
stuck in it. Certainly doesn't you serve know. your giftedness. We know that. And you have to just literally teach your body emotionally the opposite. So every time you go into the fear, like say you're afraid of bats, so then acknowledge the fact that you are afraid of these bats, you know, and then sit down, meditate, and just say something positive about them. Learn something about them. The more you learn about something, it's the ignorance that you're afraid of. It's, you know, whatever the, God forbid, you know, the, the sayings that were passed down through the ages about bats. But if you actually take the time to study them and they are useful, they, they eat all the there's mosquitoes. And they, yeah, there's a purpose to everything, but we don't, you know. There, everything on this planet has a purpose. Air. So, and they are God's creatures, so thank them, you know, and just... I'll go into a state of gratitude wherever what, you are fearful. What's the purpose of a stink really? <laughs> Did you have a purpose already? <laughs> I don't even think they serve a purpose. They, not only that, but they pee on your walls if they're inside. They have a tobacco. How many times I've seen these dark streaks? I'm like, I don't know. I this thing is outside and not in. I think it's outside. Oh, well. Yeah, most things in life have a purpose, no matter how much you fear them. The only thing I could think of that has no purpose is a stink bug. <laughs> <laughs> okay, people that are listening, look it up and leave it in the comments. You can let us know what the purpose of a stink bug is. And nothing gets rid of them. You can't, you, you can't spray them with anything because the shell is too watered. So... Or hairspray. I, I, I spray hairspray. Okay, on one thing I'm, I am I want to share, and this is getting away from our topic, actually, but yeah. since we're on this subject now, um, we've made our, our land, our waters, everything so toxic. And the big thing, please, people, throw out Roundup. I mean, get rid of it, but don't just throw it out. Get rid of it, throw it, because they had banned it at one point, but I don't know what happened. The lobbyists got it back. Yeah. It's the worst, worst thing that's killing us. Watch Dr. Zach Bush and listen to what he has to say about it. It has polluted all of our soil. It's gone because it goes underground, goes into our waters. It's horrible, horrible stuff. Because everybody, well, people are nice, getting lit. Everyone wants them. nice lawns without weeds and everything. Yeah, but there's a purpose to the weeds also. They said if you leave it, if you leave a field with the weeds, eventually, he talks about this, it goes, it passes, and it changes. It, it just, oh, it's horrible, yeah. horrible, horrible stuff. He said, it's a wonder we're walking vertically. I know. So I did. But so getting, you know, let's get back on topic here. Um, right. Once you get beyond the uncomfortable feeling of a fear type base or whatever you're going through, you're going to be bigger, better, brighter than before. Remember that once you move through it and you shift through that. So just shift it. Or as I always say, we've had some uh, thing on this is flip switching it. Just flip switch it. Flip it. Flip it. And the other thing, Arlene, if you catch yourself going into fear about anything, catch yourself in the moment and say, oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, mind. You are not going there. Nope, nope, nope. I'm not going to. You are. You can stop that feeling, but you have to verbalize. Sometimes people have to verbalize it, you know, because I'll catch myself sometimes and, you know, like, no, nope, stop it right now. You're not going down that path, Jereni. Just and like so the, the techniques to change things like that. There's so many techniques. techniques. You know, sing. We talked about this before. Singing and singing is very important. It shifts you out of that. Yeah. You sing, laugh. Right. Watch you know, laugh. I mean, we know. Joey and I will call each other up when we're going through things. We just, we laugh our way out of it. Exactly. This is I how know. Arlene and I lift laugh each other up. Because we all have those days, right? Or? Yep. Where you figure, I can't get out of this. I'm just, uh, this is really bugging me. And we always end up laughing so hard that we have stomach aches or we're crying. And then we realize how silly we were. And another thing is, when you find yourself in a fear-based thing, hey, maybe you're going to lose your house or whatever, you think you're going to lose your house. Go back. I want you to go back to the time when you thought, oh my God, I'm never going to get through this. It's that bad. Yes. Yeah. It could have been 10 years ago. Yeah. And guess what? You got out of it, didn't you? Yep. Somehow you always got well, out of it. Well, that's what I brought up my example, but and I lived it. I went through it. And to this day, I think right. back and I go, how did I do that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, at the time, it seems like there's no answers. 
There's no solution to your fear or your problems. But if you only look back, go back 15 years, however, when you had something really horrific and you thought, I'm never going to get out of this. And boom, here you are. Yeah. So everything is temporary, right, Arlene? Oh, it's that's for sure. Temporary. What goes up comes down. And we could be high. What's that Correct. song? High on thing and then drop down. Um, but so now you have the ability to change go, anything. We're up and down, up and down, up and down. It doesn't stay. It doesn't. Well, if we stay the same, that's death. Because you you're not growing. You're not. You're not exactly. being pushed on anything new. So, yeah, I mean, my biggest fear this week, I was literally shaking because I had to plunk down like close to four thousand dollars for a class to grow my business. And I'm like, I don't, you know, that's a lot of money right now in this day and age. So I had to just like, you know, the the coach said, look. There's something that's unique that happens in the universe. When you make that commitment, even though you think at the end there's no way you're going to be able to pay for this, once you make that commitment and jump, the, the world comes to you. Something literally comes to you when you're trying to grow you or your business. It's not vanity. And guess what? I plunked down the money and now I've got someone who wants to have me do a custom painting. All right, all right, yeah. $3,300. Yeah, that's great. Hello. And at, at, um, at, look how that fear, if I would have not signed up for that, because I want to grow this podcast. I want to help Arlene and, and come up with new ways oh, to grow ours. social. It's, you know, it's not just me. And to learn about social networking, which I was doing all wrong, that I find out completely it's wrong. So you have to... This is the way you grow, and you never stop growing, right, Arlene? You, this brain, I don't care how old you are, it's never too late to learn something new. Too late. No, never too late. Yeah. That's it, right, to the last moment. So we take our final breath. So that's a perfect example. Like, oh, my God, where am I going to get this money? And then I get this permission. Yeah. All right. Well, we just have to wait. This so is a great Stay this focused. Is a stay focused, everyone. Think of self if you're approaching anything that's horrific. I mean, there's, there's, you know, we're not making light of this. I mean, there's right hard, hard and hardships that happen to each and every one of us. <laughs> uh, we've tr tried to give some examples. Bring it close to you. Take one thing, look at one thing and just make a movement towards it or make a list, pros and cons. You just weigh out everything and you'll get through it and you'll be on the other side and think, wow, like Joanne said. Right. So, um, it's just, you know, it's temporary. Yeah. We Everything have, is temporary. Yes. So, like this life. Hope we brought you some pearls of wisdom today. As my, my, my wonderful husband friend says, if the left one doesn't get you, the right one does. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That's his big philosophy. But anyways, um, anything else, Joanne, to wrap up or? No, just, you know, just remember that your mind it can change anything. You are that powerful. We are powerful. And we're Don't get out of free. One of you, please, please subscribe. Go down below and hit the button. It doesn't cost you anything. Please share with people. You could come back. These are archived to the, all the videos right. we have in that. Check out Beacons of Balance, our website, and um, tell us what you'd like to hear. Make your comments. Um, we want to keep growing. And we thank you for being here with us. And as always, Go out of here from you, this mind, this head, and drop into your heart space and be the beautiful beacons of light that you are and shine it out to this world because we all need it. And keep it going. Keep it going. And we love you guys. We'll be back. I love you. Love you, Julian. Till the next time. Love you. Bye.